Hello boys and girls, welcome to another topical video for the channel. Uh, usually don't do these all that often, but uh, I figured I didn't really have anything else going up today. Might as well throw something up that maybe might be of help to, uh, to someone. Apologies if my voice sounds a little hoarse. I uh, kind of got a scratchy throat, I don't know why. Cue the YouTube comments, they're going to say, probably from sucking so much dick, but uh, <laughs> I'll just take those, I guess. Um, so today's video discusses... Um, the great gaming burnout, and I think a lot of people go through that at some point, uh, and some people never get over it. And, you know, getting burned out on something, whether it be a hobby or a job, uh, even if it's lifelong and something that you've really always enjoyed, it's kind of inevitable. Uh, it's just part of life. If you do something especially repetitive and don't change it up, eventually you're just going to get bored and uh, not really feel the same spark or life uh, that you did once before. So in my 21 years of, well, almost completely 21 years of playing video games, um, I think I've managed to avoid being burnt out pretty well. Um, and I figured I would just share some simple little tips that I feel like have helped me accomplish that. And uh, I would love to hear from some of the older uh, guys and the uh, guys and girls in the uh, the audience. You know, especially if you're around my parents' age of 45 to 55. If uh, you know you've been playing video games since you know the 80s, I'd love to hear what you have to say. See if any of our uh, you know tips kind of coincide and all that kind of stuff. So let's hop right in. Tip number one is surely the most simple, and that is to just finish your games. It's that simple. Finish your games. Um, a lot of people I know will buy like the yearly installment of whatever franchise they like and they won't even say touch the single player aspect of it if it's mainly a multiplayer uh, you know focused game or they won't even finish uh, say the main storyline if it is some type of RPG uh, whether it's open world or not um, don't get me wrong if it's a shit game and you're just not having a good time with it then cut your losses sell it or give it to a friend who does enjoy it and move on but i know so many people that just have a backlog of games and we pc gamers are really bad about it with steam that we see something we're like "Ooh, i want to buy that so we click buy and yet we have 750 other games in our library that we've not even launched yet so number one to getting back on track to not being burnt out is quit blowing money if that's what you're doing 24 7 on brand new titles and finish the ones that you truly want to play that you already own whether you're in the middle of it or you haven't touched it at all just start from the beginning and sit down and play that game to completion it doesn't have to be 100 percent do whatever you want to do it uh you know you don't have to get all the achievements or do whatever but beat the story uh experience all the modes that that game has to offer and get just you know what the developers wanted you to get out of that game and you'll finish you'll feel a lot better because of it. you'll feel like you actually got some value for your for your money even if you didn't get you know a dollar per hour value um even bad games that you know looking back you may necessarily think eh, that one was kind of a waste in my experience i've always felt better just completing them even if i didn't really enjoy them all that much because you still at least i do get a sense of accomplishment from just well i got through the shit you know what i mean so simply just go back and finish what you have that you truly want to play before you buy any new titles and if you know you're not going to play it or you look at it and think eh, i don't really know if it's a physical copy of something sell it give it away whatever you're going to do and if it's on Steam, just hide it for a while <laughs> and get to it whenever you're done with the stuff that you actually really want to play. Tip number two is a little bit more flexible and will you know, allow you to show your creativity in your own way. Um, I suggest making your own goals in any game you play. I've been playing anything from the Nintendo 64 on, went back to the Super Nintendo when I was like five years old. Uh, I've had the PlayStation 2, original xbox xbox 360 xbox one uh and of course the pc some handhelds every now and then and what i always like to do is even if i would you know say 100 percent of the story or done whatever I'd, i wanted to set out to do for what the game has to offer in its vanilla state is i always like to look around and see what i could do in the game on my own uh set my own goals to either you know it can be as simple as i want to unlock a certain skin 
or some type of attachment in this multiplayer shooter, or it can be something as complex as I want to get all achievements, have every piece of clothing, have every weapon, everything in The Witcher. It doesn't matter. what It can be as big or as small as you want it to be, but for me, setting goals that are outside of what the game scripts is always really rewarding to me because I feel like I'm playing my, own, you know, I'm playing the game my way. And uh, it especially helps when the game is more sandbox oriented. It lets you do what you want, you know. For me, it's always been more fun in open world RPGs to do my own random stuff. And a lot of people feel the same way, I, I have a feeling. Uh, but even in, you know, just multiplayer focused shooters, you can do your own thing, whether it be just focusing on getting a particular weapon. Uh, it doesn't matter. But even in multiplayer only shooters, you can, you know, focus on unlocking a particular weapon or getting a certain commendation or whatever you want to do, or just think I want to do this ridiculous kill streak uh, and just go for that. If you have something to look forward to, if you have something that you're striving to achieve, even if you don't necessarily 100% achieve that, you have a goal and you're more driven and focused while playing. And that makes it so much more immersive in, uh, in my experience. So no matter how big or how small, just set a goal, go out, try to do it, and um, you'll probably have a better time because of it. Tip number three is also a little bit about personal preference. I recommend that no matter what you're playing, if you think you've played everything, you haven't, try to expand your genre a little bit. Come outside of your you know, comfort zone. Um, I know so many people that, like I said earlier, just buy the yearly installment of X, Y, and Z game. Um, one person in particular I, I knew throughout high school would buy the yearly Call of Duty, the yearly Assassin's Creed, and the yearly FIFA. Now, these aren't games that are known to be extremely innovative. Comparing, you know, the 2015 installment to the 2010 installment is like comparing night and day, obviously. But when you buy only those games in succession and you play the one installment back to back to back, it feels like they're not going anywhere. It feels like you're playing the same game over and over. Naturally, he got burnt out of video games because he was playing one shooter, one, you know, kind of generic open world RPG and one sports game every year. That's all he was playing. If you just step outside of whatever cycle you have yourself in or whatever genre that you, you know, especially I know some people that just play straight shooters or some people that don't play any multiplayer games or whatever it is, just step back and look around and see if you can't find something that looks interesting outside of that genre. Um, just spring for it. If you've never played a real-time strategy game, just try to find one for cheap. Uh, try to find a couple, actually, that may uh, spring your interest if you have the funds for it. Go find a RPG, an open, real open world RPG if you usually just stick to shooters. Uh, try a third person shooter if you're a first person shooter only person. You know, just expand your horizon. Try something different. Don't just eat meat and potatoes all day, every day, you know, because um, you're missing out on some good shit. So just give something else a try if you haven't, and that will always let you know that you actually do or don't like something. If you don't like something, you can always say, well, not a fan of that genre or that particular game. I know to stay away from it now. But you might just, you know, fall in love with something. You, do, you never know. Uh, when I was a kid, I was all about, you know, all the Mario games. My first shooter was GoldenEye on the Nintendo 64. That kicked off my love for first-person shooters. Uh, the first real RPG I can remember attempting to play was Castlevania. Three, the 3D one on uh, Nintendo 64, and it was so above my head, but I just loved the world and the enemies and the level design. That got me into RPGs. You know, just try something different if you haven't before. And at the very, you know, worst case scenario, it will make you appreciate what you already like even better, and you'll be able to draw parallels and differences between the two. So just go out, try something different, even if you think you might hate it, especially if the reviews are really good for it. Um, more than likely, you won't go wrong. Tip number four is somewhat of a warning, somewhat of a caution to tip number three, though. When you're looking for those games to expand upon, when you're looking for new genres, new ways to play, don't just buy a game because it is popular. Don't go to the top sellers list on Xbox Live, you know, PlayStation Network, or Steam, and just buy whatever's on the top if you've not played it before. Um, most of the time, these games are popular because they are good, because they are liked by a vast majority of people. 
However, that doesn't mean that you will like it. I found a lot of the times that the most popular games out are just not made for me or that I just won't enjoy them as much as a lot of people do. To date this video a little bit, the most recent unstoppable popular game out has been Overwatch. And since it came out in beta, it's just been a titan of a game. It's top seller on Xbox and PlayStation and, of course, through Blizzard's own PC network. Um... Every YouTuber's playing it, every one of my friends are playing it more or less, but I'm just not really interested in it. Um, that's not because it's a bad game, it's just because I know what kind of games I like. When it comes to shooters, I want a more realistic tactical shooter, or an all-out balls-to-the-walls military shooter like Battlefield, or I want a pure arena-style first-person fast-paced shooter, such as the un upcoming Unreal Tournament. Uh, which is why I didn't like the Doom multiplayer. It was too much Halo for me, and I love Halo, but that's like a completely separate type. Um, I'm just not into this hero shooter type mix yet. And of course, that takes experimenting to know that. But do your research. Make sure that whatever you're buying isn't just because, oh, it's top seller on this. And if you're looking to expand your genres and, you know, something you haven't touched before just so happens to be a top seller, say you've never really played a third-person open-world game and The Witcher 3 has been top seller so many times and you see that and you think, hmm, maybe I should buy that one because it's most popular. In that case, you probably won't go wrong. Some people may not like it, though. Just be sure to do your research and to see why it's popular. Don't buy it just because it's popular. Buy it because of the attributes that make it popular. Um... Spend some time, look at reviews, look at especially user reviews, people in the community don't trust paid websites like IGN or GameSpot, and uh, just do your own research, basically, and go off of the own information that you're able to, to gather. Don't just buy it because that's what all the cool kids are doing this, these days. And I feel like that's what a lot of people end up doing and get disappointed. Uh, case in point, a friend of mine that used to play nothing but PlayStation bought an Xbox 360 when Halo 4 released because that's what we were all playing. And of course, being a lifetime Halo fan, I'm buying anything that has Halo on it. Um, and I will be the first to admit there's been many games in the Halo series that are not good, that are not very great. Uh, Halo 4 was not bad, especially being 343's first venture into, you know, owning the Halo franchise. I liked it a lot, but it certainly was a far cry from the amazing uh, game that Halo 3 was to me. But my friend spends, you know, close to, what was it, $350, $400 at the time on these on the new console and game uh, bundle, and, you know, plays it for a few hours, maybe 10, 12 with all of us, and basically never touches it again. And why did he buy it? Because it was like the top-selling pre-order for that year. But that's not really a reason to buy it. You should, especially when upgrading, or not upgrading, but investing into a new system, Make sure it's what you want out of it, not just because that's what all the, you know, quote-unquote cool kids are playing these days. Finally, tip number five is kind of a uh, straightforward one as well, but I feel like it's something that especially us in our instant gratification and multitasking um, generation kind of overlook and overstep our bounds with. I recommend that no matter what you're playing, don't multitask. Uh, you know, silence your phone or at least, you know, don't text the entire time. Turn off the TV. Uh, don't try to watch a show at the same time. Just play whatever you're playing. And there are situations where, you know, there's a lot of times if I'm grinding out some repetitive ass achievement because that's one of my goals I like to set is completing all the achievements for games that I particularly like. Um, sometimes it just makes sense to not be involved and have your brain focused on just the game. Sometimes you want to turn on a podcast or watch YouTube or whatever. In that you know case, then it makes sense. But I know a lot of people that try to play through the campaign or single players of games and then watch Game of Thrones in the background or do something like that. Um, basically, it just kills the experience of both. So my recommendation is just do whatever you're doing and only that. Turn off everything else, especially in a single-player game, uh, something that is really, you know, atmospheric uh, or immersive, and it will help you be more immersed when you have all those other distractions out of the way. Now, obviously, if you're like a father <laughs> or a mother trying to raise a small child, you can't get rid of all the, the distractions, but limiting the distractions to the best of your ability will certainly help you be more immersed and appreciate what's going on in the game. And, of course, when you're playing a multiplayer game and you're actually trying to be 
uh, really competitive, then yeah, you have to have as little distractions as possible. But uh, there's a lot of times I'll see people uh, or hear in the background, especially through multiplayer chat, have a TV or a radio or some stupid shit playing in the background when they're playing a competitive multiplayer game. It's like, dude, turn it off. <laughs> it'll help you so much better. So limit the multitasking as best as you can, and uh, it'll help you appreciate and have more fun in the game that you're actually playing. Now, I know I said finally there, but I'm going to throw one more little bonus tip through, uh, to all the PC gamers here. Um, if you're a PC gamer like I am, you definitely value performance and performance for the amount of money that you pay for. You know, we probably are into PCs because of one of a few reasons. It's uh, the best value for your money. It's a upgradable path and probably for most people it's because you can get higher resolutions and frame rate and graphical fidelity than you can on consoles as of right now. So I think a lot of people tend to forget why they even buy that hardware in the first place and get so sucked up into the hardware. You know, don't forget why you did that because there's a lot of people who have lower end hardware that aren't, you know, a quarter of the power as powerful as current generation consoles and they're just, they're happy as shit because they can be playing games. Um, I myself have a, you know, particularly pretty high end rig. It's a 980 Ti. Uh, graphics card, which was last generation's, uh, you know, flagship graphics card from NVIDIA, ignoring the Titan X, of course, and uh, I am very happy to have the powerhouse of that graphics card. I'm more interested in what I'm able to see on the screen because of that graphics card. Uh, I'm more interested in being able to play those certain games that I otherwise wouldn't be able to run, or at least run at that fidelity and that frame rate and that resolution. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm as big of a nerd as a lot of people are when it comes to, you know, getting a nerd boner when you see, oh my god, 12 gigs of DDR5, or oh, we're getting HBM2 next time, and the core clock's almost 2,000 megahertz. I mean, it's, it's cool. Technology, I, I love that kind of shit. But a lot of people turn that into a pissing contest more so than just, hey, that was a good game, wasn't it? And uh, people forget forget what it's all about. And, you know, there are some people that just like cars, will build a fucking monster PC just to say they have one or just to be able to crank out benchmark scores. And that's fine. If that's what you want to do, that's great. But a lot of people start off by building PCs or getting into PC gaming because they just want a better way to play their video games they like. And then in a year and a half or two years, they completely forget about that aspect and it's just about, oh, I got to upgrade, I got to upgrade. You know, take a step back and realize that you probably have a pretty advanced piece of technology sitting in front of you, and that if you know it's running shit at a pretty satisfactorily rate, then you could probably enjoy the game no matter what. And if it's not, spend a few hundred bucks later on if you could save up for that, and it'll run it really satisfactorily. So just remember why we did it in the first place. It's just in, it's in to enjoy video games, and that's what everyone should do, no matter what you're playing on. Just remember, enjoy the damn game. <laughs> so in a simple recap, my five biggest tips for not getting burned out, or if you already are a little burned out on video gaming and want to try to ease yourself back into it, is that number one, complete the games you already own. Number two, set your own goals in games that allow you to do so. Number three, expand on the genres that you're currently playing. Number four, not buying video games just because they're the top seller or they're the most popular, but doing our own research to see why they are popular. Number five, not multitasking or at least limiting it to as little as possible when you're playing video games so that way you're more immersed. And for us PC gamers out there, remembering that it's more important about what you're seeing on screen, the experiences you're getting in-game, than the, what is actually in your computer rig. Remember what PCMR always says, it's not the hardware in your rig, it's the software in your heart. So I hope my simple advice can uh, help some people out there. This is by no means sage wisdom, just some shit that, you know, looking back on my short lifetime that I feel like I've done and that has uh, generally, you know, just kind of kept me away from being burnt out on video games. As a matter of fact, I feel more invigorated about playing games than I actually have in a long time and it's because I have more free time uh, because of working and uh, I'm planning on going back and playing quite a few games that I've already beaten once in the single player, but I just feel like I have more life to them. So uh, I'm definitely going to go back and play some more of those before I buy anything new. 
And, uh, you know, along the way, hopefully I'll be able to expand in some new shit that I haven't played or go or revisit stuff I haven't played in a while. Like I've just been playing a, a rec- a, an RTS called Grey Goo. I haven't played an RTS in years and I'm really enjoying myself because of that. So I think this is this, uh, you know, this kind of formulaic approach works pretty well. And if you guys have anything important that you think you want to add or what's, you know, kept you from being burnt out on this hobby or maybe another hobby of yours. And uh, if you are burnt out and like to share why you think you are and, uh, you know, kind of a warning as a warning story to others so that they don't fall in the same trap, uh, please do so as well. So uh, thank you guys. This is kind of a, like I said, an offshoot of what we would normally record and definitely a different type of topical videos. Most of the other ones are very um, time sensitive. This one hopefully will hold its ground and help out a lot of people. Uh, maybe. We'll see. Um, be sure to leave feedback below, like I said, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.